was like Hypergrass 2005 or 6? 2006 and Paranoia Agent was 04 and then Tokyo yeah. Godfathers oh. was 03. Okay. Yeah. How come he hasn't made a movie since then? Because he he's died. been he's dead. He's dead. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, Shinoda? I didn't know. I didn't. Hey, Shinoda be like, dying. Shinoda be like, oh man, he, he's been a lazy bomb. Why is your knee working anymore? <laughs> I didn't he, know. You'll yeah, find that dying of pancreatic cancer has a tendency to do that to people. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Anime Club After Dark's Movie Reviews, a discussion detailing the good, the bad, and the downright ridiculous of anime movies. I'm your host, Alex, but you can call me Senpai, and I have Ooh. the entire crew is with me tonight. I have our czar of source material, John. You know, he doesn't have the screen pulled up anymore, so we can't dance and make him laugh. No, I, I cover you up. Can't. It's just for my own entertainment at this point. I cover you all up so I don't have to see it during the intro. Yeah, he, he's learned. <laughs> he's adapted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have our poser extraordinaire, Natai. So what you're saying is, uh, by the way, it's good to be here with you, Alex. So what you're saying is that Alex is, is not like a machine learning thing? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, I'm a machine sentience. learning algorithm. He's too smart. You just have to keep feeding me shit, and I'll, I'll learn eventually. Then, bro, learn. you keep you you feed yourself shit all the time. Later. You don't need our help. Yeah, I'm, I'm not saying it would be an efficient process. It's just a process. <laughs> <You're>... <laughs> Uh, we also have our what does this say? Pursuing Dreamer. Yeah. What does that mean, Shinoda? Is he a distant this dreamer? Was a psychological movie, okay? And oh, she was okay. constantly what? pursuing something. I mean, that kind of makes sense in the um, towards the end, like what what she says at the end, and I'm like, that makes a lot more sense about like this story. Yeah. Um, before we actually get into our movie review tonight, I do want to remind everyone, if you like what you see and want to see more, do consider giving us a like uh, and subscribing as well. Also, let us know down below what you think of the movie we're about to talk about tonight. That movie did is... did you do that, uh, Shinoda? Uh, 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 uh. Oh, uh, I don't remember. I did something. <laughs> I don't know what he did. Yeah, I, don't I don't know either. But the movie we are talking about tonight is Satoshi Kon's Millennium Actress. And uh, for those of you keeping track at home, uh, this will be the final Satoshi Kon movie we've done a movie review on. So after this is That's done... That's not very fair because he only has like four. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately. Can always uh, do Paranoia yes. Agent. Yeah, but that would be a spoiler cast, not a movie review. But yeah, I'm yeah. not opposed to it. It's a 13-episode series, and it's pretty good. Yeah. It's All I remember good. was being weirded out by watching that on Toonami, and I had no idea what was going on, <laughs> which is par for the course for a lot of Satoshi Kon movies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't really know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, you're you're not wrong. Um, but let's get into it. Um, as I said, directed um, and co-written by Satoshi Kon. Uh, he also had help writing it by uh, Sado uh, Sada Yuki Murai, um, produced by Madhouse. Remember when Madhouse was great, John? <laughs> Madhouse is fine. Calm they down, were... Jesus. They they're doing all right so far with um. Free run. Well, they did great with Free Run. Yeah, with Free Run. Yeah, I was like, it just came out. It was super popular. I already forgot it. It's ancient but, history to me now. <laughs> but that hasn't gotten a second season yet, so the curse might we'll be it, still in well, play. Don't say that. Stop well, the curse is that it's not ever going to get a second season. But... Damn, don't say that <laughs> shit. No, don't say that I think there's shit too much all. money wrapped up in free run right now for there not to be a second season, to be honest. Yeah, there's too much hype and it's still all these it's what we're we're over 6 months now since it premiered. Uh well, well over 6 months since it premiered. Um it's still number 1 on Mal. The, 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 the FMA bros have had all this time to take it down, and they haven't. <coughs> I'm just saying. It's because it they understood, impressive. like, Matt, like, like, pre rent is, is fucking its peak, bro. Like, it's so it good. Is. <laughs> we uh, wax. <laughs> we were second off for in so much in the spoiler cast. <laughs> we were. To be we fair, were. it was that good. It, 
it is. You should go watch that spoiler cast if you haven't yet. Um, the, the Millennium Actress, though. Uh, the film was first screened at the Fantasia Film Festival in Montreal on July 28th, 2001. Uh, here comes the depressing part of this. Um, the movie was made on a budget of somewhere between 100 to 130 million yen. I couldn't find a definitive answer on exactly how much it was, but it was somewhere between those two because those were the two extremes numbers that I found. Um and that equates to roughly eight hundred thousand or so U.S. dollars, give mm. or take. That's actually um, really impressive. Well, here comes the depressing part. Its worldwide box office, not including home video release numbers, is two hundred and sixty-four thousand eight hundred and forty-seven dollars. Okay, yeah. so to be fair, right? We we've had a huge discussion about how basically prior to Mugen Train, or no, prior to your name, yeah. Um, Japanese movies just overall never did well in box office releases worldwide. Yeah. yeah. Like outside true. of Asia, animated yeah. movies just because there's Ghibli this movies. huge and Ghibli movies. Well, Ghibli movies yeah. are different because like, yeah, definitely. It's a whole because different yeah. everything that says animated movies prior to your name outside of Ghibli, because Ghibli was distributed by Disney. Hence mm-hmm. Disney still won. Everything yep. was Disney, right? Pixar Disney. Definitely. And occasionally, um, DreamWorks is that yeah, the other Dream- studio? Well, yes, that's yeah, they Disney. were the ones that were doing it before Disney took over, I believe. Well, like what? I think Shrek is DreamWorks, right? Yeah, Shrek yeah, Shrek, DreamWorks. yeah, Shrek is done by DreamWorks Animation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like, here are Disney. the three, right? But mostly, <laughs> the three are Pixar, Disney, and DreamWorks, and they're doing movies for kids. So animated films, unless they were for kids, don't do well traditionally. So this is like kind of par for the course. Um, because in 2001, what's that? Toy Story? Like, no, Toy Story was 97 against... or 90... 98. Oh my god, that's 95. 95? Really? I think. Was Toy Story the original Toy Story you're talking about, right? Yeah, Toy Story 1. I think I it was 97 came out or 1995. For... Oh my god. And 2 was 97, I think. No. Oh my god. I'm looking at it right here. Release date, November 19th, 1995. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, yeah, like sense. animated movies just prior to <laughs> Mugen Train and Your Name and all that other stuff, no one really cared about specifically Japanese animated anime. films. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah, it's like, it's it's cartoons, it's for kids. Mm-hmm. So you you mix that with like, oh, is this a cartoon? It's going to be for kids. Then you watch it and it's like, dude, that made no sense. It's Satoshi Kon. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, ah, I don't Can know what else happening. Can you imagine being like a regular here? Joe walking into a Satoshi Kon movie? It's like, what? I think <laughs> that, I think that, Okay, I, I always describe Satoshi Kon as art house, and I hate I hate it so much. I you sound hate so pretentious when you say that. It's so pretentious, but it's <laughs> Satoshi Kon's movies are like that. Okay, you you actually have to like have a high IQ, and you really don't. But you have to have an appreciation of art, um, and that's coming from someone who has zero appreciation for art because I can't tell the difference between a Jackson Pollock and last night's dinner on the back of my toilet bowl like seriously <laughs> <laughs> you're not wrong i love the i love the explanation i can't tell the difference okay to be fair some art school students can't either i fully believe jackson pollock is overrated a sham well, yeah. a scam <laughs> artist but um yeah with satoshi Kon movies it's it's something that you you have to analyze and you have it's to definitely an watch. auteur Definitely an auteur. auteur. Oh my yeah. god! Yeah. Talking about pretentious words. That, it's <laughs> true though. Like you, you can tell. No, it's like it's like it's, his movies definitely have his voice. You know, just like a how Kojima games are very definitely Kojima games. Yeah, they're Kojima know. games. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. A Satoshi Kon movie is a Satoshi Kon movie through and through. You know. Yeah, which is why Satoshi Kon is. Even if people don't watch anime, people who appreciate films will know who Satoshi Kon is. Oh yeah, he is bigger yeah. than anime. That's there, absolutely true. I don't if you go out there and look anime, at it, but like cinephiles, definitely like yeah, hard. You know. That's what I'm saying. Like he's, you know how like there are people who are like, okay, they made this anime, right? Like um, mm-hmm. the lady who wrote Inuyasha and whatnot. And right. She made like Rama one half and all that other mm-hmm. stuff too, I believe. Inuyasha yeah, uh-huh. Rama one half. Um, Say Yatsura. Yatsura. Yeah. Yeah. Say Yatsura. yeah. So it's like she's well known in the anime sphere, correct? Yeah. Right. Yeah, but yeah. she wouldn't be no well known in like the cinema cinephile sphere. True, but Satoshi Kon is n- well known in the yeah. cinema sphere. In the same way, Hayao Miyazaki Kon. is. Yeah, Definitely. well, I mean, yeah, Mi- not, Miyazaki not the exact same way, but they are known far and wide. 
Well, I mean, Miyazaki is kind of known in both <laughs> in yeah. anime and also in the yeah. film world because it's like yeah, it's fucking it's Miyazaki. <laughs> yeah, but like you, you see like well-known American or Western directors talk about Satoshi Kon. You got if you go if you go look at quotes from our, uh, directors like Steven Spielberg or Martin Scorsese, um, Darren Aronofsky, um, you can find them talking about Satoshi Kon and like yeah. how they have how they have been influenced by Satoshi Kon in their filmmaking. So I, yeah, yeah in, in that sense, yeah, I definitely think art house sort of applies. He's sort of a director's director. Yeah. He's your direct, he's your favorite director's favorite director. Yeah. Kind of. <laughs> oh my God. Actually. Yeah. That's a great way to put his, uh, um, he, he died art. so young. I know. Yeah, I like how we blew like... Chino's mind right before we started recording. It's like Chino's <laughs> like, "Why hasn't he made any more movies since Paprika?" Dude, fucking died. <laughs> Not yeah. dummy. He should make more movies. <laughs> that was so know. funny. It's what like, yeah, the last thing he made was uh, Paprika back in like, uh, what did I say? Two thousand six. Oh six. Yeah, and it's like, oh, I wonder why he hasn't made anything since. It's like he died in twenty ten. He bro. should come back, <laughs> that guy. He should definitely make a new yeah. movie. He should make a comeback. <laughs> we'll go dig him up right now. <laughs> I need to watch his other movies. <laughs> like Miyazaki took eight years to make The Boy and the Heron. I bet Satoshi Kon is doing something as well, you know. <laughs> 20 years, what's that? You know, I do think he's a hidden uh, script somewhere. I mean, he could have he could have had stuff that he wrote before he died that never got produced. I don't know. Um, yeah, but I think it needs Satoshi Kon's touch for it to yeah. it does. work. His strength was he's so... storyboarding and editing. So you know, with like with Millennium Actress, I definitely feel like um, it's the weakest of the four movies uh, mm -hmm. in terms of subject matter and like being interested, right? Because it's it's kind of boring. Let's be honest here. It's about it his second about, outing as a director, right? Yeah, this was his yeah. second movie because the first one was Perfect Blue, which is it was this one yeah, is right before his, uh, Tokyo Godfathers. It was his second outing as a director for a movie, but it was not his. Uh, it was his third outing as a director overall because before this he had done directorial work on the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure OVA, OVA series. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fucking wild. <laughs> From 1993. It's all, it always comes back to JoJo, I'm telling you. It always comes back to JoJo. Fucking JoJo. And, yeah, this, um, this was also the first film that he both directed and wrote. Because he didn't did he write, write Perfect, Perfect Blue? He did not write Perfect Blue. It's based on a novel. Oh no, okay. no, but the screenplay was was it written by him for the movie? Um I can look it up. No, the screenplay for Perfect Blue was written by Sadayuki Mirai, who okay. was also his co writer on this film. Oh okay. Okay. It was cool. the same team. Now I watched this on Crunchyroll because it's streaming legally in North America on Crunchyroll. And yep, they offered crazy. both VPN, the Japanese dub. <laughs> they offered both the <laughs> Japanese dub and the English dub. Now, I checked out both of them, and I kept comparing and contrasting. Uh, I don't think the English dub was bad, but I preferred mm. the Japanese dub, and I kind of stuck with that towards the end. Mm. Yeah, Is this the first I, time uh, you I... watched this one? Sorry to cut you off, Alex. It's yeah, this is, this is the first time I, I watched Millennium Actress. Yeah, this is the last one I needed Same. to watch. <laughs> so um, I was like, I've seen every other one. I haven't seen Millennium Actress. <laughs> I so when I was rewatching this because I've watched this film a couple of times before. Um, when I was rewatching it for doing this movie review, I watched it in Japanese, uh, but I have seen the English dub before. It's not bad. Um, I just but I, feel like the d the main difference for me is like there is a lot of inflection in the Japanese uh, voice actors in voices that convey a lot of emotion. Mm -hmm. Like the main the main guy who likes um, the actress that they're interviewing like there's a difference in how the english guy presents himself versus the japanese guy the japanese really? guy is like uh, completely understands like oh i should be ingratiated to this lady because she's like she's my goddess like all bow down and it's like it's in his acting and i can i can i hear that and i'm like it sounds a lot better to me because it's like because of how it plays into the story later on about like yeah. who he is then i'm like that's why i appreciate it a lot more uh that's again not to say that the english was bad i thought the english was not terrible but I felt like it was missing that type of soul in the acting. Yeah. Was I would it, agree. Did yeah. it feel a lot more like someone reading off a script kind of thing? Uh, it felt like this person who was voicing at least the um, the main director guy, uh, or that's a documentary doing the documentary. Tachibana. It felt like he Tachibana, yes. 
it felt like the English voice actor didn't understand what the role was supposed to be. It's like, mm. he's supposed to be this uh, director guy who respects the actress, sure, but it's like, it was a lot more than that because the person that he's interviewing, uh, Chiyoko, she's she's more than just like one of the best actresses of all around time. It's like, it's someone that he looked up to. It's someone that he literally- He idolizes, yeah. He idolizes, he literally like sacrifices his life to try to save her and shit, right? Like multiple times. He does it twice in the movie. Yeah. And then like actually more than that, more so than that. Because like not only does he have this admiration for her, he also like loves her. Like it's this weird borderline kind of stalkerish Obsessive. thing. Yeah. But not stalker in the funny. way perfect blue stalker. No, but... no, no. That's why I was kind of thinking like, I wonder if this is going to end up like, because again, I've never seen Millennium Actress. So while I was watching, I was like, is it going to end up like perfect blue where like, is is the director guy of the documentary going to be like the stalker or something? And it's like, mm. no, it wasn't. And I was like, oh, because the subject matter of Millennium Actress is, is very boring because it's just literally, um, it's, it's a woman's life story. Yeah. It is an actress's life story. And it's like, oh, that's it. That's all it was. And it's like, oh. Now, granted, she lived through some interesting times. <laughs> um, it's just well, I mean, the interesting part foremost, is like the way it's presented with like, you know, how she's yeah. remembering It's stuff not about it's the story itself. It's about how yeah. the story is told. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's what I mean. How the story is told. I'm like, this is yeah. definitely a Satoshi Kon movie. <laughs> like, I was like, yeah. this is 100% this Satoshi Kon. I didn't yeah. even have, you wouldn't, if I didn't know this is why Satoshi Kon and you just showed me the movie, I would be like, this is Satoshi Kon. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. But uh, the the animation was beautiful. I liked it quite a lot. Yeah. A lot of running um, animation in this one. <laughs> oh, there's so much it's, running. This movie has so much running. Yeah, it's also a thought that crossed my mind. It's like there's a lot of running in this fucking movie. Um, I, 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 would I really like... liked the special effects that they did for like the snowstorm oh, yeah. and the fires and shit like mm -hmm. that. It was super cool. It looked really good. So I did. I did when I did some research for this. I found out this was Satoshi Kon's final film that he worked on, where he used 100% traditional cell animation. Mm. Okay, that explains okay. it because I was like, this looks a lot like cell animation. I I I love it. I thoroughly love that. I uh, love the art yeah. style of uh, cell animation. But I was like, this looks super. Uh, well, not super, but older and dated, but in such a pleasant and delightful way. Hmm. And I was like. This has to be still animation, so I'm very glad to have that confirmation right now. I love the, yeah. the coloring as well. I would like for like the most part in the first section of the movie, like there's this very distinct color difference between the let's say present day characters and the rest of like the world itself, where it's like it looks a little bit more washed out to differentiate between them. Like it just in terms of like the color use of this movie is like it's really nice. It's really thought out as well, you know. Attention to detail was definitely given, is yeah. what I will say. Um, I do want to say, the since we're on like art and animation and stuff, there's some trippy moments in this movie. <laughs> yeah. There's... Um. Again, in traditional Satoshi Kon fashion, uh, the way that he splices reality with like the film work. So, the main story the transition goes between that scenes, yeah. the there is a guy who is in charge of doing a documentary of this actress, one of the best actresses of all time. And she's retelling her story of like when she started getting into like being an actress, but also it blends into them playing a movie that she also played in. So it's like, mm -hmm. what is reality and what is the movie that she's portraying herself in? Like, we don't know. And it's a seamless blend of like, is this, is this story that we're reading or watching along with the director here, Tachibana, like, is this her story or is this the movie? We don't it's know. Almost like, it's almost it's like, like she's creepy. recounting her life, but her memory, because she's like at this older age, like it's almost like her memory is like getting fuzzier because it's like the transitions between the different films she was a part of, like just like that. Like you, you just like get disoriented. It's like, oh, it's a different fi feature we're in right now because it's almost like her memory is like being kind of like twisted to some extent because of her age. It's... The editing in this movie is, is phenomenal. It's so crisp. You know, the scene yeah. transitions like it's awesome. So something else that kind of cropped up while I was doing a little research into this movie was um, Satoshi Kon himself when he was talking about um, sort of the process of, of making the movie because this was also his first like original idea because his first movie was based on a novel. Right. Um, 
he wanted to do a movie. He says, I'm going to throw a French word at you that you guys have probably never heard in the style of a trompe l'oeil. Do you guys know what that means? No. That? It's, it's a French phrase that literally means to deceive the eye. And it's a style of art that uses optical illusions to present three dimensional space on two dimensional planes. Oh, huh. so that's, that's what he wanted to do with specific. the storytelling. Which, if but you think that's about it, what he did in the story takes. What he yes. did here in Millennium Actress, yeah, he played but... so many tricks on our eyes, bro. Like I didn't know because again, like, like the very first thing where it's like, oh, she's trying to get recruited to be an actress, and then it ends with her running after that train, and then it mm. transitions into the movie poster or yeah. the movie or the and DVD it cuts title, to her, and it's like the scene from what? the movie. Yeah, was that? Yeah. So was that a fake story about how she found a love life or was that her first movie? Like, I don't know. And the fantastic part is it's up for interpretation. And that's really cool, in my opinion. Yeah. Which it's for weird, that though, style that, like... of art, that's the point of that style of art. It's supposed to leave it up to the interpretation of the person that's viewing it. I thought it was very, like, obvious. Like, at that point in the movie when it's like the distinction between the film and what happened. Later on, it gets more like entangled, but I, I would say that's sure. I, I don't know. I would say the the one at the beginning is probably the one where I can say, okay, this probably really happened, but it also kind of mirrors something that she did in a movie. But then as it goes on, it's like I'm really it goes on, yeah, what's supposed to be a movie and what's supposed to be a real life. Yeah, definitely, I, mean, they I feel like in, in the only more. thing that I was like, okay, definitely this is part of a movie, but also like I. I I didn't know if it was a red hair or not. It's like when, when it's like feudal Japan. And I'm just like, okay, this yeah. is definitely like a movie. But then there was the whole like that witch who curses her stuff. And I'm like, is there more to the story? Like what's happening And she here? sees like, that witch later in life. <laughs> like freaking Satoshi Kone. I can't tell what's reality or not. Damn it. Because that's almost well, I mean, like remembering. I think, you... no, I, I, think, I think the opening scene of the movie, you could say, is definitely a movie as well. <laughs> Where yeah, she's in like, the rocket the ship. Rocket, yeah. Yeah. That one was obviously a movie, but also when they uh, finally revisit that at the end, and it it makes sense of like what she's doing. It's just like I oh. loved how it connected. I my mm. mind was so freaking blown when it uh, finally interconnected together. I'm like, holy shit! That's such a cool thing to do to reconnect it to the very beginning, but with all the actual people now in place. I, I just found yeah. it really cool as shit. Um. Go on now. Sorry, I no, I, I was I was just agreeing with you. Like I, I I think the the way it was connected at the end was great. Um, it kind of goes into the whole themes of of the movie, which I really appreciated. Um, I don't really have much else to say though about like the art and animation, but I do have something I mean, to say about the music. It is like, it's, uh, yeah, to, to summarize, like art and animation and cinematography. It's good. It's Satoshi Kone, bro. Like, really need, good. need I say more? Like, if you don't know who Satoshi Kone is, literally watch any of his movies and you'll understand what we mean. If you want like, to study Satoshi like, Kone. like fucking Chris editing, like watch more of his movies because it's watch a YouTube clip of Paprika and you will understand. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of Paprika and Perfect Blue in Millennium Actress. Um, you can definitely see where he kind of was going. It's just with, interesting, with like that. It's just interesting that quote you pulled about like what he said because it it he he almost did that even to like a much like more interesting extent. In Perfect Blue, you know, that's sort of like deceiving. I think that in Perfect the, Blue, the it was unintentional though. I think Is with this, he was intentional. What? Do what? It. In Perfect Blue, it's definitely intentional. That's part of like the. No, no, no. Yeah, no. I'm I'm saying he went into it not intending it to be that way, and it became that. In this, he went into the project wanting it to be that way. I don't know. About hmm. that. That, that's I don't that, know about that's that. what I gathered from his quote. It's interesting though, because I, I I agree with you that there's aspects of that in Perfect Blue for sure. Right. Um, but I don't know that when he went into Perfect Blue, that was like his intention from the very beginning. I suppose. It, that's what I draw from from his quote about you know starting to develop uh, Millennium Actress. Um, I guess one last thing I will say before we move on to like the music is um, Satoshi Kon was also the character designer on this movie. Um, so I like how in his movies, take... like most of his movies, at least like the people he portray are not like anime characters. They're like real people. Like they're 
imperfect and kind of ugly sometimes and it's very grounded you know yeah, yeah. he definitely doesn't play into that whole um anime, anime art trope style like yeah where ugly people are traditionally seen as like evil and bad yeah and they're like, just normal like, people yeah. yeah they're just normal yeah. people it's like oh definitely all right, so let's talk about the music. Um, so the music in this movie was composed by uh, Susumu Hirasawa, who, uh, if you've ever watched Berserk 97, you're very oh, familiar with this work. Oh. <laughs> um, he also went on to do the uh, music for Satoshi Kun's Paranoia Agent and Paprika. Um, the music in Paprika is great. Also, uh, Sho and I talked about it when we did our movie review way back when. Um, that movie was the very first um, movie, and I think commercial product ever um to utilize vocaloid in its music really was it really yes i did not know that yeah crazy Um, but i love the soundtrack in this because it's never well i won't say never very rarely does it feel like it's trying to outdo what the movie is doing like a lot of the music is very very subtle um that's the thing i I I, I love I love um, his previous work. I love the Berserk soundtrack. I love his artwork in like the the songs he made later on for 2016. Say so what you will about that fucking show. I love his yeah. I love his like aesthetic. I love the sound. I love how otherworldly it can be. But in this one, I mm-hmm. I, I I was that's when you said the name of the composer was kind of like. Holy shit! Really, I was kind of disappointed because this soundtrack feels like <laughs> the soundtrack's it. It's not that it, great, right? It's not that great. It's, yeah, it, it it's feels okay. like it's it's like trying to. I to, like it. It's trying. It feels like it's trying to amplify the emotion, but it's like overcompensating, and uh, like yeah, like I, the, I, I didn't um, connect to the, the song that all. starts playing super loudly when she starts doing the run scene, like in the first when she's going after the train. From the yeah, I will right. say it's never like bad per se it's just not great mm, i like can it put lot, it that way but <laughs> i felt like it I didn't really think that it was yeah like i definitely feel like uh this wasn't hirasawa's best work because oh yeah, no yeah. not by a long shot <laughs> i didn't it's, think it was, it was kind of all over it didn't the place. detract from it but no. yeah I, I wouldn't say like i would say i was more um into satoshi Kone's use of like no music <laughs> more so yeah. than actually listening to the music there it's there are felt... multiple scenes in this where no music no dialogue no nothing is playing. yeah but it also it also did feel very cohesive like it didn't feel like like the soundtrack there was an identity there that was like supplementing like but the... i feel like the reason for that though is because because it's different following, movies they're going um, through yeah because we're going yeah. through chiyoko's different movies so it's like they have to have different but, types of but then you have some tracks and... but then you have some tracks that it, it, it sounded like they're you had repeats of them which is totally fine but they're like in different points of the movie that didn't make feel like there was a, like there was like true intent of them repeating themselves like like, I'm gonna say it again later yeah, there on. Wasn't in the review, real, but... like, there wasn't a real like tonal shift in the actual soundtrack. It just I'm gonna say it again, like but like a soundtrack. I, I do want to rewatch this movie, and part of it is just to get another feel for the soundtrack because it felt kind of like there, but not really. Uh, I don't know. It felt kind of like indifferent to it, which is a shame, you know. Hmm. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I I wasn't blown away by the soundtrack. Um. Again, I, like I said, I don't think it detracted from it, but I definitely yeah. don't think it enhanced it as much as someone, like, as Alex puts it, like, it's, I thought it was fantastic. Like, eh. Hum me the I melody. A lot. Yeah, Do hum it. me a melody of the song. Hum me what's the melody. The, what's Do the it. main theme song? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I never felt like it was distracting. It wasn't distracting, but, like, it wasn't present either. Mm, well... It was present. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Damn. Just throw him right under the bus, okay. why don't you? I love him. Don't get me wrong, but I was disappointed by the soundtrack. I mean, it, it, it's, cert- it's certainly no, like, Berserk 97 or, oh, of or Paprika, no. for sure. But, I mean, I didn't think it was awful by any stretch. Certainly not I'm gonna his best work. I'm going to have to go, like, go listen to the soundtrack again. Because, like, I honestly can't remember any other song other than the one that played while she was running. Because I was just like, this, it was this just is loud. very yeah. loud. Yeah, it was loud. <laughs> it was a very loud song. 
Yeah. I mean, a... to be fair, besides the running, nothing else is going on in that scene. Yeah. <laughs> um, talking but... about overcompensating. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I mean, it was. It had. It had stingers when it was supposed to sting. It had mm -hmm. moments where it's supposed to make you feel emotion. Like there was musical cues. But they didn't have like zingers that. when it was supposed to zing. See, that's the thing. They didn't really have any zingers. Like See? they didn't have anything that made me. They, go, they should have went oh. bazinga. They should have went bazinga. Uh, <laughs> get out! Kidding. Get out right now! On a live <laughs> to the pill box with you. Oh my god. <laughs> Anyway, um, one thing I definitely wanted to talk about, and this is not unique to this movie in particular, but all of Satoshi Kon's movies, really. Satoshi Kon is an absolute master of knowing when to use silence in storytelling. Oh, yeah, for and sure. I, I don't, I've never, at least in, in anime, I've never seen anyone use silence as dialogue as well as he does. I mean, it's like there's that scene near the beginning of the movie where um, the main character, Chiyoko, is like talking with the, the, the man with the key. Who That's literally his name in the fucking script, by the way. It's just yeah, he's man the man with the key. With the key. <laughs> um, he did not never given a name. Um, and like there's a good, I want to say, 45 to 50 minute long section Wait where like what? they're just moving around and not saying anything, just kind of looking at each other and like – is something about to happen? Are they gonna? Is someone gonna start? Like, do they not trust each other? I love the shit like that. Like, you get a good feel for the characters when you do shit like that. And no, no other director does it. Anymore. What happened, Chinoda? What What's the you, face? Chinoda? I'm sorry. I just found out that um, my adventures with Superman got a season two. Hold on, I gotta. Text that was Tommy a this. while ago. Dude is not bro, even. We're on a attention. recording. What are you doing? Hello. I just got notified. Bro, bro, okay, bro, this bro. Is be important. thankful. Be thankful he's not playing Destiny 2 right now during a recording. I know. Let's be real. That's yeah. true. That's very true. He's not playing That's Fallout very... 76 while we're recording. Says John, who plays Apex while we're recording. Or Genshin. <laughs> he's playing it right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not playing anything right now. Raise your hands. Come on, do it. See, look. Yeah. Hand check. Hand check. <laughs> hand check. Oh, he's got his phone. He's got his fucking I phone. I literally said I'm messaging Tommy. I'm doing it Oh, my it right God. Now. This dude This dude can't pay attention. He's got TikTok brain. Fuck off. Whoa! Oh Let me just like fuck up. Just remove him yeah, from the recording right now. Like that. Yeah, just gonna uh -uh. like uh -uh. remove you from can't. stage. <laughs> edit, just edit him out. It's fine. What a prick! <laughs> wow. Uh. <laughs> but anyway, back to what we were talking about. The reason we're actually here, at least we're, the reason three of us are here. Um. <laughs> I, I love that Satoshi Kon can actually do that because so many other directors would make that so fucking awkward. Yeah, because awkward silences, right? I mean, mm. again, I, I feel like a lot of Satoshi Kon movies are you ha you got to pay attention, you got to watch, and I understand that that's not for everyone. Um, I definitely on. have moments and times where I'm like, you know, I don't really feel like having to watch a show or a movie right now. I kind of just want something in the background. Mm. So, That's awesome. Satoshi Kon um, movie, yeah. <laughs> you don't put it in the background. Yeah, that, <laughs> Satoshi Kon movies, you, you can't put on the background. You got to watch, bro. Because <laughs> yeah. there's so much shit that happens when without dialogue and without and cues. Like, you kind of just got to watch. They're so disoriented to begin with when you're paying attention. Imagine not paying attention. and be like, we're in yeah. Japan? What? <laughs> like, that's like one of the unfortunate things about a Satoshi Kon movie. You have to actually pay attention. You uh, you have to pay attention. Whoa, it's, it's, it's like you're sitting like down to watch a movie. Way. Crazy. Are you telling me that I have to pay attention when watching a Michael Bay film? I don't think what? so. No. no. Oh, hold on. That's a whole different topic. <laughs> but that's my point, right? Like every every type of director has their own type of directorial style. And there are certain shows and movies uh, that you have to pay attention in something you don't. Where it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, they'll don't worry. In about thirty seconds, some character will talk. Will just um, diarrhea vol dom. What, what the fuck is it called? <laughs> vomit. What diarrhea of a wimpy kid? They start kid narrating. Vomit? No, they start narrating everything. Exposition vomiting. Exposition mm. dump. Oh yeah, exposition. Ah, expedition dumping. Yeah. I was like, exposition. <laughs> don't worry. Vomiting. In about thirty Holy seconds, shit. someone will exposition dump all over me right now. <laughs> I was wondering where he was going. Like he was shitting all over I himself, and I'm like, "What is I he talking come about?" Up, I, I didn't remember what it was called. John, do you need to go poop? Maybe. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Um, 
that's really the two main things I wanted to talk about with like, Quality discussion. sound design and stuff was the the music and how it's wonderfully done like the silent moments in this movie are. I'd agree. I mean, does anyone I, else yeah, have um, anything they want to talk about with this or can we move on to the actual story? Such no, we as can talk is. about the actual story now. The story of okay. running. Um, Before we go there, I just want to do a real quick thing of like, would you guys recommend this? No. Yes. No. Maybe. Yes. I'd recommend I mean, it simply because it's a Satoshi Kon movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I always recommend Satoshi like, hey, do you like watching art? Do you like watching film? <laughs> do you want to watch a director who actually like is extremely effective and he's your director's favorite director your favorite director's favorite director like go watch the Toshiko movies I however will say if you're looking for a film that you want to just turn your brain off and just like enjoy in the background that's not Satoshi watch Satoshi Kon films nope. yeah no it's kind of going to be impossible to enjoy his movies like that I would this is would. not a, Mato- a Matogo Shinkai movie this is a Satoshi Kon movie <laughs> <laughs> Slander, slander, Such slander, bro. There's little, Mitai. there's little things in Shinkai films that, oh, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I, I, I would definitely like. I would recommend it because it's a Satoshi Kon movie. I would just like, uh, give a, a quick disclaimer that it definitely is on the weaker side of his filmography. Personally. Yeah, out of the four this movies, pr- like I would yeah. say, this is my least favorite. But least favorite out of movies that I like, like of all of them, like so. Yeah, but it's still like. Yeah, it's like. like the worst of the best yeah, yeah uh, <laughs> i have a lot of issues with this movie but yeah i definitely would still recommend it just to like see more of like what he was capable of doing even though it's probably his weakest one i've watched so far but yeah okay he has a very uh, limited yeah. filmography no reason not to check it's yeah in, it's in, yeah it's i mean it's four movies bro oh, yeah. <laughs> you can watch all of his movies in an afternoon don't. Yeah. In fact, if you go to well, Anime Expo, no, they're doing be... a Satoshi Kon night, I believe. Oh, God. They are. Really? They're playing all four of his movies over um, Anime Expo's weekend. Yeah. Fucking hmm. wild. Yeah. And I was like, that's kind of crazy. Satoshi Kon Fest. Yeah. I kind of want to go to that and just be like, <laughs> yo, welcome, my art house brethren. Like, let us let us enjoy filmography Let's together. Let us stroke our beards and <laughs> yeah, smoke a pie. Yeah, out a little, like, Let's smoke a pie. Beard. I'll, I'll get Satoshi a little Kon beret. Kon. <laughs> I'll have a little cigarette that's on a little plastic thing. <laughs> like, oh, the classic French thing. Yeah. yeah. Bring like a monocle or something to like, ooh. <laughs> yes. Gotta hate it. That hate is it a so movie much. I like. Uh, I want to see John wearing a monocle now. <laughs> Do it. Do it. Do it for the people. That can be arranged. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Um, so yeah, I guess we're going to get into the story here a little bit. So uh, fair warning what for those story of you who have right? watched this far. Huh? <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's a joke. Ty, don't be an asshole. It's, it's just a joke. What did he say? I didn't hear him. He said, "What story? Am I right?" Uh-huh. 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 Okay. Um, so, a- a- hold on. Hold on. Anyway, okay. for people who have watched this far and haven't seen the movie, uh, we will be talking potential spoilers here. So, go ahead, John. <laughs> all right. I will say I think that the subject matter of this movie is the weakest of all of Satoshi Kon's films because this I agree. one. In Millennium Actress, it really focuses on blending the realities of watching, is this a movie or is this her life? We don't know. Like, that's the main point of the movie. And unfortunately, that's the only point of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I wish there was more because I, I thought there was going to be more. Like, with the whole, like, when they go back to feudal Japan and there's that witch that she sees. And it's like, oh, it turns out that was just internal struggles of her life. Whoops. <clears throat> but yeah. <laughs> I will say, one of the... Uh, parts that they do the framing really well on is when they're on a set but they're not in a set but they are mm-hmm. on a set that's really where cool, yeah. she that where i was just like that's classic so are they, yeah and i'm like but are so are they filming something are they not filming something is this her real life is this is not we don't fucking know like damn it that's a, the some, entire point of the movie was that there's some awesome storyboarding where they're like they'll in that scene they're like they'll cut to like a shot of like uh, uh, of like her back and then because like the people working on the set are like moving furniture and stuff, they like open like open like a slide, whatever, and slide over one of the doors, and like the the documentary director is there in the frame now because it's open up to him. It's like there's like a lot of, a lot of really smart storyboarding in this movie. Um, it, it's so fucking cool. It's just a shame that like there's not a lot of character to the characters themselves to like propel the movie forward. 
Yeah, because that's like the we... biggest thing I I I, f- I was kind of disappointed by. Like, in terms of, like the characters, even like the main character herself, like she just wasn't interesting enough to like follow along her story story of her life. Yeah, because we get the gist of her story literally in the first scene, right? Yeah, her entire story begins with I'm following the man in Manchuria. Yeah, like who is yeah. this man? What is the story yeah. behind him? And we learn pretty and soon on into the, the movie, movie, like he's just an artist and he's an artist that spoke out against the war. And yeah. and that's it. That's the, Which that was a she, dangerous thing to do back then in Japan. Extremely. Yeah, but she doesn't have any yeah. of the state. But her character is like following and looking for that man. Like there was no like they were talking about how she was born. And during the earthquake, and our father died right after, or something like that. And they talk about like the the war and after the war, but it doesn't feel like these events. Like you, it didn't feel like you got a different view of her character because of these events and how they affected her. She felt very static throughout the movie. Like sure, events happened, and yeah, like her life took her in different directions. But it, you, I didn't get a sense of like how her character felt. Throughout all these different events, like it, it which is very, crazy like, considering the time period she's living through. Yeah, a World War II and um, Reconstruction, Reconstruction. Yep, because they they go over that, the bombing of Tokyo and stuff like that. Yeah. I, I do like the the Godzilla like the sort of reference. Cinema. Oh, the Godzilla. Yeah, because yeah, I thought cute. that was pretty funny too. That was cute. <laughs> yeah. I genuinely loved and hated the fact that they teased the flourishing cinema industry that happened in Japan post-war uh, Japan specifically and the fact that they teased it and didn't go into it whatsoever and I'm just like mm. that's that was such a cool opportunity that like you just kind of because it over. doesn't really is it mm, I don't like, know didn't matter not too much but at the same time I'm just like Guys, you, you you are like, just skipping past a lot of things and just focusing on her, like what she's doing in terms of this one guy, instead of exploring her a little bit at all. And I'm just like, come on, explore her. Like, who is she? What's she about? Like, she's about we, chasing we, the man in yeah, Manchuria. Yeah, like, yeah, she wants to chase Manchuria, the man with the key. That's it. And it's kind of boring because of that, which is a huge complaint of mine. Yeah, Yeah. I mean, we talked about this before we started recording. It's like, for me at least, my love of this comes not from the story itself, but how the story is told. Yeah, I like to have the story is told in the frame, the framing and the cinematography. Like, that's what, that that's this classic Satoshi Kon part of it, right? Yeah. But, like, when we get to the end where, like, she's on the rocket ship and it's like, okay, mm -hmm. this is the beginning of the film, but it's the end of the film. Yeah. And she's like... Yeah, it was never about the destination. It's always been about the journey, the chase. I've always been in love. I've I wasn't in love with the man. I was in love with the chase of the I'm man. I'm a dog chasing yeah. cars. <laughs> and it's just like <laughs> what? I don't The Joker from Dark Knight where he's like I'm a dog chasing cars. I'm a dog I don't chasing cars, Batman. I, I don't I don't know what this is. What? Dark Knight. That. Heath Ledger. I don't remember Bro, that. Right? I do not I'll, remember I'll, that scene. I'll send you the scene. I'll send you to. Oh my god. Good. But yeah, good like um I thought the whole culmination, like, I, I thought it was going to do a different twist because, like, the whole witch thing, right, where she goes back to, like, feudal Japan. It's like, okay, this is obviously a movie, but it, it could have been, like, were they lovers in a past life or something? Like, are they fated to meet again? And they're just never fated to ever be together because she got cursed by that witch? Like, is the that what the story is, that is about? She, t- she, she is that witch to some extent. She yeah, the, the twist was like, was oh, there is no with... ancient magic. There is just, yeah. it was, she was this, obsessed this, with the witch was love. herself. Yeah. Well, she was obsessed with it because she knew the answer. She's like, the guy's already dead. But yeah. she didn't want to give up on chasing him because that was kind of her, like, reason to live, to chase this man. And that's why at the end when she's like, yeah, I've already known that he's been dead for a long time, but, like, that's not what I loved. I didn't love him. I loved the idea of him. And that's and what like, kind of, like, final lines is about how One of the final lines is about how I, like, I always lived for the pursuit. Yeah. yeah. So Honestly, like, oh. I found that to be actually a pretty cool um, character moment. Like, probably her I mean, best moment. Well, that's to me, that's what makes her boring, though. Like, that's what makes this movie boring. It is boring. what makes her boring, but at the same time, it's also the most interesting. Like, her reason to her... live is just like everyone else's reason to live. Like, I live for the moment. I don't live for the destination. It's like, yeah, that's kind of how everyone else lives their life. <laughs> 
I tell it's... I tell you the one like super sad part to me is the revelation of like the Scarface dude. That, that's also his name in the script, by the way. He doesn't have a name. But Does he have government... a Tommy gun though? Yeah, the government official that tries to find the dude with the key, the artist, um, and pursues him all the way to Manchuria. And then I do. Uh, comes back after the war to meet Chioko to kind of reconcile uh, that well, revelation. To deliver the letter. Yeah, to, yeah, to deliver the letter. And yeah. that, that, that revelation when he was talking to Tachibana um, that he actually killed him in one of the prison camps. It's like, yeah, oh my god, him to death. death. Oh, yeah. that was the one scene they got me. It's like, oh god, no. I do like that aspect. How the all the all the cast members are like these reoccurring characters through the movies because of her memory is kind of like shifting. So you see, like the Scarface guy show up as like in each different movie. He's always like, like the bad guy, the, the military bad guy. Yeah, bad guy I do like that. Pursuing him, yeah. It just and again and the got transition. The one, the, uh, you got the established actress that's jealous of her yeah, popularity. Yeah, I love that. I love that aspect of the movie. That was like that's my favorite part of the movie. How like yeah. they they come back again and again just in these different movies as different characters. It, it's great. It just yeah, you know, which plays into the whole like, is this a movie or is this her life? We don't know. They're my being biggest mixed is, all biggest the time issue of that her. is that it's it, and again I love it in this movie, but it just when I think about Satoshi Kon doing this shtick to some extent, this editing style, the storytelling style, like, I am like, man, in Perfect Blue, it was just so much more entrancing and like captivating because it was, sur- it was surrounding this like story that you were so invested in. And so like, yeah, because it, it the was, subject like, matter itself was more interesting. But I mean, also this like is the just a plain yeah. story of of just the character and her, yeah, but, her but life. It, like that's it. It's not, a, it's not just in a matter of a subject matter, but like the 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 characters were just much more interesting. Like talking about Godfather, that movie doesn't have as much of that sort of like like mind fuckery of e- editing. But the the right. witty dialogue and the characters are like the hook of the movie because you're enjoying the how they like bounce off of each other. They're so entertaining to watch, like right. talk to yeah. each other all the time. And this movie doesn't have that. So it, it doesn't have like an anchor to like from personally speaking to for me to latch on to and being like get invested into something beyond just the oh like the really slick editing and just like how it transitions so well between yeah. the stories yeah, and no, to, like I hundred percent agree with you there. Like to me, yeah. it's just the slick editing and, and the framing of <laughs> the Satoshi Kon stuff, the classic Satoshi Kon stuff. Yeah, the great animation. The rest of the it great is transitions, just like whatever. The fucking yeah. phenomenal transitions. Unfortunately, yeah. Oh yeah, like when she's on that train uh, in Manchuria, then it gets derailed, and then it shoots yeah. like, it's like okay, so she obviously was on a train in Manchuria to go meet the man in the north, and then it gets attacked by rebels, but then it turns into like um freaking mm-hmm. feudal Japan. It's like you know, yeah. she opens the thing, it's now feudal Japan. It's like what? Where are we? <laughs> what happened here? <laughs> I also like how through all of this, the the camera guy is like the only person doubting what's going on. It's like, yeah. he's like the only the only f- like source of comic relief in the movie. Yeah, he's just constantly doubting that any of this is real. <laughs> and I felt like that was a it was a cool part because it's like Chioko is such a good actress that even when she's retelling her story, it's like you're there. There, yeah, it's like you're there. Like that was the point. I was like, yeah, that's that makes sense. But, that's but the I also thing. loved how Tachibana like always showed up and was like, "I'll save you, Chioko." <laughs> that's the thing, though. Like they talk about how great of an actress she is, and there's this moment at the beginning of the movie where they're like, "She's like, she's so distressed. She wants to find this man," and like, and they're talking to her. It's like, hey, it seems like you're not really present in the scenes. Like, in the, in the older actress, she's like, "Yeah, she's too amateur for this," and. Then she talks about she's looking for someone there and she's so distressed. And the director is like, There, that's what I'm talking about. Great. Use that, Use that for as the your scene. source. And I was like, and I was yeah. like, Oh, that's that's awesome. Okay, cool. But it's they a don't cool ever connection. Yeah. But they don't ever like beyond that scene, there's not another scene there like you get to see her acting being such a whoa, she's she floors me or she's captivating to me. It's like mm. Well, no, that was the point though of like Whenever they shoot the scenes of whatever was next, where it seems like it's her life, but also like mm-hmm. cut, hold on, let's run those lines again. And it's like, oh, she was actually recording because right. like I said, that was her reason to live, her raison d'etre, right? Yeah. 
that is her her source of her great acting ability is chasing the man in Manchuria. That has been yeah, the definitely. She's but been able don't, to be such a good actor. I get that because they talk about it, but you, I for the rest but of the movie, why, the like, of the, that's why it fuses the the movies and reality no, so much because it's like I, I get that. But the, I, that I, was but, the framing. That was that was the entire point. But, but my my issue is that like for all much how they present her as being this wonderful actress, you don't get a mo. Uh, don't get a real sense of how like the acting in the actual films is like whoa that's incredible yeah and how, like there's no comparison to like we're just told that she's this amazing actor and so you she's have to this amazing face actor. Actor. yeah, yeah we, we just have to kind of believe it. it which is a shame yeah i i, I get what you're saying the i kind of wish you we were able to see some of that too even if it was only like a single scene where you actually got to see her gravitas as an actress within the story I don't know. I, I feel like the more I talk about this movie, the more I'm like, God damn, I want this to be of such like I, I want this movie to be good, but there's so many things that are annoying me. Uh, <laughs> I, I should <laughs> watch it again. I movie, but... though. I, I don't know, man. No, it's not bad. I just maybe Perfect Blue was is, is such, said such such set such a uh, high standard for me. Although I love Tokyo Gone Farthers as well, so I don't know. I mean, I, I'm I'm of the agreement with you that this I think everyone here that this is definitely his weakest film. But it's not bad. I'm not saying it's, it's bad. By the way, it's not bad. No, it's not bad. But it's you're I, I when you when you hear my score for it, you're gonna really think it's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I definitely, I definitely enjoyed all his other films more than mm-hmm. this one, because at the beginning, like the first thirty minutes of watching this, I was like. God, do I not like Satoshi Kon movies? Like, why does this movie not feel as good as the other ones? Because, like, within the first 20, 30 minutes of his other movies, I'm, like, enraptured. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm invested in this story. Versus Millennium Actress, I was kind of, like, turning it, like, pausing it and then going to do other things. Like, I didn't care about, like, having to pause or not pause. Mm. And I was just like, yeah, I got to go do something and just pause it real fast. Versus his other films, I'm like, I'm I'm invested at this point. The climax is kind of weak. Compared to his other movie, like it doesn't come together as strong as the others do. Yeah, because yeah, it never the feels climax like... kind of rolls in lazily, whereas the in this movie, and then like is the climax in all of his other movies, are like boom, hits you right in the face. No, this because was there's not much a more subtle. Yeah, there's not a climax for the story because the the story is about life Chiyoko doesn't have a climax. Her... Well, no, the the story is about okay. Chioko, right, yeah. and it's about her finding the man in Manchuria. Um, and I thought the climax was when she goes to Hokkaido finally. Like First and foremost, That's you knew that well. he talked to you. He was like, I, I, I will take you to Hokkaido where I grew up one day, and that's where we'll meet once again. And I'm like, it took her, what, 30, 40 years to go to Hokkaido? Yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck, lady? <laughs> you finally remembered after 40 years that you said you promised to meet in Hokkaido? <laughs> 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 on a starry night when the moon is full like come on dude like what i mean i don't understand really how you forgot that, that for 30 if years you really want to pick it apart john you could also ask why in their first meeting did she not even bother to ask for his fucking name <laughs> yeah well no because it's again it wasn't ever about loving the man himself the man no. with uh, the painting the idea the painting man it was the idea of like uh a lost love like someone that um yeah. Like obviously it was just a crush. It was a passing phase, and and she knows that too. She knew that, but it, it's about that. It was that drive in her life, hmm. which is why the climax felt super boring. Because the climax was that she went to find the man in Manchuria, but he's left. It's like oh, he's not shame. there anymore. Shame. Yeah. And I'm like yeah, oh, shame. I could have told you from the beginning that the man in Manchuria wasn't there, lady. You waited thirty years. <laughs> like, <laughs> what? <laughs> In fact, I was like, I'm pretty sure he died at the prison camp, but okay. <laughs> I knew that. And yeah. then when the, the man with the scar confesses again to Tajibana, I'm like, yeah, I, I knew that. Of course. Of course he didn't fucking live. <laughs> like, cause, because when um when it goes to the flashback to the past where she goes and finds the Lord, it's like mm-hmm. he's dead already. And it's like, yeah, in the back of her mind, she knew he was dead. But that's mm-hmm. when the witch shows up and it's like, oh, but is he dead? Who knows? And his body vanishes, right? It's nice what little foreshadowing. Yeah, it's a little it bit is. of foreshadowing. It's like that's also part of like the classic Satoshi Kon like vibe, right? 
Oh, there's always foreshadowing in Satoshi Kon movies. A little movies. bit of sprinkling here and there. Yeah, but it's like such a shame that when you get to the climax and it's like, oh yeah, all this stuff that he sprinkled in, it was just a little bit. You know, it, it wasn't much. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I definitely end, understand like it being weak in the, in comparison to literally every other one of his movies. And the the greater shame is that in the end, a lot of those things really didn't mean a whole lot to the story. Yeah. I mean, they're nice little touches, but they didn't really mean a whole lot. So, yeah. now we get to the big story. What do we all give this out of 10? You it's know. high. Uh, it's uh, 7, but I think it's a very gracious 7 after we talked about it so much. Um, I, I, <laughs> you I guess. Six, don't give, give it a 6. Damn. No, I'll, I'll give it a 7. Again, I, I do want to rewatch it. I do want to give it another shot to see like how I feel about it after a second viewing. But for now, it's a very gracious seven. I'll say that because I do like uh, Satoshi Kon's style of like the transition between the scenes. Like I do really like that. But very gracious seven. All right, could be a six. Chinoda. It's my favorite director's favorite director's movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a number. <laughs> Uh, 7 out of 10. I thought this movie was done okay. Um, I love, moreover, the concept of the movie, how it was portrayed, not the actual story itself. Uh, animation, as we discussed, uh, really good. Music, okay. 7 out of 10. I would definitely recommend it to people. And, like, it's one of those movies that I can show, show, up, uh, show to more normies with no trouble at all. And they'd be like, Oh, ho, ho, this is a this is a good movie. I don't know why. Why, why are you like the? This. Why is the average Joe you're showing this movie to a mustache twirling villain? <laughs> like I don't think an average Joe would. I don't think a normie could appreciate a Satoshi Kon movie because nah. yeah, it's 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 old yeah, house. but it's <laughs> yeah. I think if you're looking for movies that are more like general audience, you want to go with Mutoto Shinkai. Yeah, I'm thinking Shinkai films to be honest, <laughs> or Miyazaki. Your Miyazaki. guys' friends aren't art house students? No. No. Oh. No. You need to get cultured friends then. I don't want <laughs> to have those type of friends. <laughs> John, what do you give the movie at a 10? Personally, I think it's more of an 8 out of 10. Um, though after discussing it with you guys, I feel like 7 out of 10 is probably a, a better <laughs> score than 8 out of 10. But that's because I, I appreciate all of Satoshi Kon's works. And hmm. I think that what... I think that Satoshi Kon set out to do, he did very well, hmm. which was the framing and the transitions and stuff like that between yeah. re blending reality and um, the films. I thought it was fine. I do have complaints with it, and it is the weakest of the four movies, in my opinion, as well, but I still like like all the films, so... It's at the, least that the, that, that the tracks for Satoshi best. Kon. He's, he's, a, you know, he's, he's got four out of four films that are actually pretty decent. Yeah. Three bangers. Um, I <laughs> myself, <bangers>. yeah, <laughs> I myself am kind of in the same vein of John. I give it a nine out of ten, uh, simply because I simply because I really like the way the story is told so goddamn much. Um, Make it a ten. I really wish. Make it a ten, you huh? coward. Make it a ten. You give it a ten, you coward. Give it a ten, you coward. I, I would give. I would give that. it a ten. I would give it a ten if the like actual story around the main character was more developed, <laughs> more exciting. Um, but I don't know. For me, it's more about the way the the way the movie is made, the way the story is told, than the actual story itself. And I love that so much. And I really wish more directors would take kind of risks like this and experimenting with how they tell their stories make art house movies <laughs> yeah <laughs> make art house movies great again would this um, even be considered art house because it, its production value was like what did you say eight hundred thousand usd approximately more or less yeah roughly <laughs> like that's kind of a high budget for art house yeah it is <laughs> yeah i don't know steven bloom would like to have a word with you <laughs> um I don't know. Man, I I would say I would give the I would like I would say this is art house, but just barely. Well, the reason I say Satoshi Kon is an art house director is because he he does experiment a lot with how he does mm. framing and cinematography, which is like a hallmark of art house films. Uh, 
and I don't think all art house films have to be low budget because I believe Pulp Fiction is considered art house. What? Yeah. Really? Yes. And Pulp that's Fiction not a that's not a low budget house. movie. I mean, I guess you could also say this. Well, no, you can't say the same about Kill Bill because that's got too many special effects. Art house can have a lot of special effects. Eh, I not feel to that like. <laughs> The requirements for art house are so weird, and it's all just like, oh, this it's is very art nebulous. House. <laughs> it is, it is it's very, very nebulous. nebulous. So it's uh, art house is like pornography. I know it when I see it. <laughs> I don't. No, that's a quote. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that that that's our scores. Um, I'd love to know what uh, th- those of you watching. Let us know what you think about um, this movie. Uh, did you agree with this? Do you not agree with this? Is it actually uh, his worst film that he made? I don't know. Let us know down below. Um, unless you guys have anything else to say about this movie, I will go ahead and sign us out for this movie review. Sign us out. I'm ready to go. All right. In that case, uh, thank you, everyone, for stopping by to watch us talk about uh, Satoshi Kon's Millennium Actress. Um, please do not forget to comment uh like subscribe if you like what you saw want to see more it really does help us out a lot you can also check down below where you can find links to all the places anime club after dark uh does all of our shit um we also have a merch store link down below as well where you can help us out that way if you so choose with that though i have been your host alex and we will see you next time say good night guys good night check out the circuit <laughs> art! <laughs> <laughs> what'd you say john i said art <laughs> no, no no before that oh i was like we should just finish the circuit and just like review um paranoia agent like Let's now we've it. reviewed all of satoshi Kon's i'm work. not i am not opposed to it i saw uh, it a long time ago i want to see if it's as good as i remember it being i only also remember watching it as a kid and being weirded out by it so i have no idea if i'd like it or not <laughs> paranoia agent review win <laughs> never let's do it